Yo, what is up everybody? It is me, your boy TPT, coming at you, not live and not from Twitch TV. Hope you're all having a fantastic day today. So, we are doing the second part of our religion beginner guide. Now, obviously, take a couple of days to get this one out. I've been busy with university, job interviews, all that sort of fun stuff, but we are back in it. So, before we do jump quite in it yet, just gotta obviously give a quick shout out to my boys over at the E4 Casuals and E4 Australia Discords. Check them out, lovely people. Avoid the politics channel, everything will be fine. So, let's just jump right into it. Now, our first religion can be found over in the North American region. It is the Totemists. So, the Totemists get themselves national and rest minus one, and plus one tolerance of the true faith. Plus, they also get some unique decisions, as you can see here. Uh, these three. Now, on top of this, they have the natives mechanic. So, basically, what you have to do is you put points into each of these and eventually you'll be able to change your government type once you have all three of these and then reform your government now in order to do that you do need to have a province adjacent to you which has a institution and then you'll be able to reform the government now something important is the migration so uh, say we're a one province minor, so if we just tag over to Mahican, we have the option to migrate. Now, what this does is it means, you know, we move our province, we get 50 of each minor points, and it has a base waiting time of three years. However, something to note is that if you have low stability, so stability minus three, then it actually decreases the waiting time and... Oh, wait, that's not what it is. That not? Oh, there we go. Yeah, it actually decreases the waiting time. So, you want to be sitting at, like, minus three stability if possible. And boom. You know, it decreases it by, I think, yeah, 30%. So, not insignificant amount. It's one of the best ways to get points as a Native American um, in these tribal regions. So, you know, it sucks to be Iroquois, sucks to be Huron. Grab yourself one of these one promise miters and migrate away. So, the next religion obviously is over here. It is the Nahuatl religion. And to do that, we'll head on over to the Aztecs. So, it's actually a pretty nice one. It's plus 10% morale of armies, negative 2 national unrest. On top of that, you get religious reforms. So, this one. Uh, instead of functioning off of that, it actually functions off of vassals and doom. Now, doom it takes up by a particular set amount every year. And if it reaches 100, basically you lose your ruling family and it just tosses your nation into chaos, as you can see. Now... When you win battles, occupy provinces, and sacrifice the rule and heir of your subjects, however, it will decrease the amount of doom that you've currently got. So, what you have to do to reform your religion is, if we look here, you know, you got to get all the religion reformed, and once again, the institution. So, the reforms are negative 0.05 monthly war exhaustion, plus 1 diplomatic relations, plus 5% discipline, plus 1 calmness, and negative 20% stability cost. So... There are five requirements to get each of these. You need to be at peace. You need to have a stability of at least one. Your doom has to be less than 50. You need to have at least five vassals, and you can ha must have no rebel-controlled provinces. Once you've completed all five of these, you can reform your religion. You will keep these reforms, by the way. And then you'll also be able to take your institutions. Next one, we head on over to the Mayans. Now, Mayans, very similar, except instead they get 10%, uh, negative 10% uh, land maintenance modifier, negative 2 national unrest, 10% infantry combat ability, plus 1 colonist, negative 20% co-creation cost, 
Uh, also, you need to have no over extension and own at least 20 cities instead of the, uh, what do you call it? Instead of the vassals, you just own the provinces directly and you don't have the doom mechanics. You get plus one possible advisors and plus one tolerance of the true faith. So it's, it's a bit more safer, but obviously the bonuses aren't as good. So you do have to keep that in mind. Now, next, of course, we have the Incas. These guys, all right, they get 10% manpower recovery speed, plus one colonists, yearly legitimacy, morale of armies, and core creation cost. Now, they, on the other hand, have the authority modifier, which basically is gained by owning a large number of provinces, and it is also decreased if you ever grant your provinces autonomy. So, if you grant autonomy, it will change your authority by negative five. If you drop autonomy, you will gain plus five authority. And it gives you national unrest, stability cost, and clergy influence. On top of that, you can also, obviously, you still get the two bonus missions. Next, we have Animist. Animist is uh, pretty much the same as Totemist, uh, except you get negative unrest and tolerance for true faith. Once again, over here, this is also their, their native mechanic is the same one. It's also the good old advancements. Now, something to note is the Federation ability is also locked by the, um, by the religion. So, and by the natives. So, keep that in mind. Now, next one we have is the Fetishists over in Central Africa. Now, the Fetishists get plus two tolerance of heathens. And plus one diplomatic reputation. Quite nice. The tolerance of heathens. Very, very nice. They also get cults. So, as you, you know, interact with more and more religions and nations. Also, you know, with uh, other fetishist nations that have cults unlocked. Then you will unlock them yourselves. And as you can see here. Boom. So, we just gained 2.5% discipline, and these last until your monarch death. So, free 2.5% discipline for as long as our monarch is alive. That's not too bad, is it? Now, obviously, it is weak in the sense that you only start off with a, uh, you know, Central Africa, but, you know, you do have some pretty nice discipline, and the tolerance of her heathens is super sexy, I will say. Tolerance of heathens, super sexy. Very nice to acquire. Now... We move our way over to the Indies, uh, India, shall I say. Now, I should be able to go to here. Let me just check real quick, sorry, one second. It's, uh, yeah, Punjab. So I just got to release this, I just realized I forgot. And, and ah, they're following the Hindu faith, never mind, it's all good. Um, it's just a Sikh religion, it's pretty, like, realistically you should never take it, to be honest. It costs you 5 stability if you want to convert over. Uh, no, actually wait, here we go. This works. Just go like this, convert to Sikhism. Now, what Sikh does is basically it just gives you military cost and morale of armies. Plus, you also get a couple unique reforms, which is the Missile Confederacy for manpower and land maintenance, and the strength of the Khalsa for morale of armies and tolerance of heathens and heretics. So, it's a pretty weak religion. Um, it's, it's really not that good, but it, it, it also tends to only spawn over here. Uh, so, I would, I would realistically never really recommend playing it unless you're doing it for the achievement or the meme. Those are really your two options. Next religion, we'll go over to, say, Orissa. Yeah, let's go over to Orissa. So, this one is Hindu, which is a reasonably nice religion. You get plus one tolerance of the true faith and plus one tolerance of heathens. So, you know, just uh, helping you to essentially... Because, because you don't really have any heretics other than Sikh, it's basically just giving you plus one national unrest in every single province. So... It's pretty solid, I quite like it, it's a good, decent religion, and you get the deity mechanic, so my personal favourite is Shakti for the 5% discipline and 5% siege ability, super nice, you can also have, you know, for, uh, mystery strength and fort defence, construction cost interest per annum, which is kind of crap, 
trade efficiency, next attacks, which is good for money, core cool creation, cost, and aggressive expansion impact, which would be good if you weren't in India, and plus one diplomatic reputation and 20% improved relations, which if you have a lot of vassals can be quite useful. So, but I would always pick like this one probably, or maybe the cash one, depending on how the situation is going. It's just pretty nice. 5% discipline is a significant portion of discipline, so it's really nothing to be sniffed at. And I would definitely, you know, it's, it's got a nice starting area. Obviously, there is quite a few heathens around here with the Sunnis uh, and the Shias. Uh, obviously, you know, these guys are all Shia. Well, some of them are, some of them are Sunni, but etc. And overall, you know, it's a nice place to blob out. So, next of all, we'll head on over to Ayutthaya. So, Ayutthaya is Theravada. Now, Theravada gets the the system of Karma. Now, what Karma does is, essentially, it is kind of dooky, uh, in the sense that, so, you can you can increase Karma by honoring alliances, releasing vassals, releasing nations, and peace deals, returning cause, and converting promises. And it decreases from starting wars, taking promises in the peace deal. So as you can see, if you keep your karma between negative 33 to positive 33, it gives you plus 2 diplomatic reputation at 5% discipline. If it's 33 or higher, you get diplomatic reputation. If it's negative 33, you get a bit of discipline. So realistically, ideally, you want to be keeping it between negative 33 and positive 33. However, you're going to be bobbing out a lot, so your karma is normally going to drift towards the negative side. And you know, as I said, I'm just not really a big fan of it. Uh, but this will be getting a rework in the next patch um, because they will be focusing on the Indochina area. So I am looking forward to seeing how that's going to turn out. Um, on top of that, they also get negative 10% advisor cost, which is pretty nice, and the plus two tolerance of heretics, which is also pretty nice, as they do only have a couple of heretical beliefs. And so, you know, they got, you know, all that, all that, that's all going to be heathens. So that's plus two tolerance. Uh, sorry, um, Sorry, apologies, heretics. So, you know, all that, boom, that's plus two, plus two unrest there. Sorry, might negative two unrest, should I say. Anyway, though, um, like I said, I'm not going to focus too much on this one because it is getting a rework. The other one is over in Daiviet, which is the other, it's Mahayana. It's essentially the same thing. It just gives you the karma, but you get, top, you get instead of our advisor cost, you get negative 5% idea cost. Once again, this is all getting reworked, so it's probably going to be different in the next one patch um just as an example i'll just swap over to Mugen now and just show you with the animus as you can see you get that but you don't get the native thing because that is again purely new world related so you gotta keep that in mind next off we'll go to calm to show oh, oops no not not hamburg calm vajrayana it is again it's another form of buddhism it gives Plus, it only gives plus one tons of heretics, but it does give the plus five percent morale. So it's 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 a it's you know still really not that great in my opinion. Um, I just don't really like the Buddhist religions, so I'm looking forward to getting them reworked. I just think they're really weak. Um, like animist levels are weak almost, not quite as weak as animist, but definitely getting up there. I think animist is probably the weakest religion in the game in my opinion. Um, but either way, so it's just another one of those. It's got the same mechanics, all that jazz. Now, Confucian is a little bit different. So, Confucian requires a bit more explanation. So, first of all, you get plus two tolerance for heretics, negative 10% administration technology cost because it is in the Buddhism sort of like tree. So, now instead of your karma, you get harmony. And you'll see here we've got Mahayana is a harmonized religion, negative 7% idea cost. You may be asking, what the heck does that mean? Well, if we go to the button here, harmonizing religion, go to pagan group. While well, harmonizing, harmony will decrease with three per year. Harmonization will be finished in 1542. When harmonized, provinces with the pagan religion group will be tolerated as if they're Confucian, and you will get the following bonus. Negative 0.5 national unrest. We can also do Theravada for advisor cost. Um, and can't quite do Vajrayana on this. Hold up. I do it that way. That should be good. Uh, and that one gives 5% of production efficiency. So, basically, what happens is you slowly harmonize with various religious groups. And in return, 
first of all, you don't get any uh, religious unity penalties from them. Second of all, it counts as, if I recall correctly, it should count as uh, Tolerance of the True Faith for the purposes of, um, what do you call it? Okay, the, for the purposes of, like, unrest. I believe it counts for, yes, yeah, see, it counts for Tolerance of the True Faith. As you can see here, it's negative 3.5 for that. So, Council of the Humane Religion doesn't give you diplomatic, uh, sorry, it doesn't give you religious unity penalties, and also it gives you unique bonuses. Um, I do really like the negative 7% idea cost, that is super, super nice. So, next off, we have Tangri. Tangri is, um, is a little different. This one actually has syncretic faiths so additionally it also gives obviously the time to the true faith and yet they hold the unity so how syncretic faith works is it's a bit like harmony but it's kind of not as good so as you can see you do get your bonuses from the religion that you are syncretic with uh, i'll see if we can use oira as an example real quick just like do this and can i harmonize with it uh, Nah, it won't let me. That's fine. I, I've never really been too big brain on the Tengri thing. I'm not entirely sure how, like, exactly how to, like, maximize the use of it. I don't really tend to play them. I think they're pretty weak countries overall. They're all just the hordes. Um, so if you are playing as a good old, you know, king, you will probably get quite familiar with it, but I haven't played with it in a long time. Um, I believe they do also get a couple of the unique... Uh, what do you call it? Unique national decisions. But yeah, so either way, basically, you just harmonize all the religions, they give you unique bonuses to your religion according to it, and also they have the same effect as harmony, where they don't count towards religious uh, disunity, and they also count as your tolerance of the true faith. Now, we, next up, we have Shinto. So, this should be, I think it should be our last one, I believe. I don't think I missed any. So, Shinto is obviously purely in Japan. Gives you 10% morale of armies. Now, with Shinto comes the obvious Japanese exclusive of isolationism. So, isolation comes where essentially you have a bunch of events which spawn when particular things occur, as you can see. You know, there's just some particular requirements in order to do it and so when you do that you'll have an option to either go for an isolation or an open approach so basically depending on which option you take you will either decrease or increase your isolation level and as you can see it gives you some pretty nice stuff you know like stability cost war exhaustion missionaries development cost and tech cost and obviously it reacts accordingly. Additionally, I believe they get a couple of, what do you call it? A couple of, uh, I, think they get a, I think they get a unique reform. Wow, with the Shogunate. I think the Shogunate is actually specifically linked with Shinto off the top of my head. Um, or it may be linked possibly with the government itself. And they also get these, which is related to being the Shogun. So basically, it just gives you a bunch of sort of fancy stuff. So anyway, that is all the religions we've got for today. Next video will be on how to acquire the majority of those religions and how the process works. It's a bit harder to do, you know. So I will probably put up like a full video explaining it because it, it does take some uh, some under you know some requ some required knowledge to be able to do, and I want to be able to show you guys. You know, some are pretty easy, like Protestantism and, uh, you know, and Reformed are pretty easy, but, uh, you know, converting between, like, heathens and heretics and that is a little bit harder, so obviously, I'll teach you how to do that. So, anyway, guys, hope you have enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you've got any questions, feel free to check me out over on twitch.tv slash transplaytekken, or my Discord, link in the description down below, of course. Um... I, you know, I'm, I'm, I stream uh, six days a week, except Sundays, 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. It's a great place to hang out, chill, make new friends, not get raided by bots, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.